Terraria speedrunning. This is probably not gonna be absolutely unreasonably insane, huh? Today we're speedrunning Terraria with my friend Purple Hair Guy. So we'll start the speedrun as soon as he spawns in and I click to join his game. Now doing a co-op speedrun has its advantages like us being able to work on oh two different things at the same time, but the bosses are going to be a lot harder and we need to share resources so it evens itself out. But for the start, Purple Hair Guy will be making four houses and I'll start looking for money. So first I needed to create the houses for villagers to- Four houses seems oddly specific. Move in. I built them like this because they only require table, chair, quote, walls, and a certain amount of space to actually work as a house now platforms count as walls <laughs> if you surround them completely and yeah you, he said quote walls they're happy about it so they're pretty much just living outside now with these houses npcs will move in and there's two specifically mm. we need the first being the merchant the second being the demolitionist the merchant will actually move in after you get 20 silver and he can be used to sell our stuff too he'll give us money for it the demolitionist we need five bombs and the merchant to live in our house and he'll sell us dynamite which will pretty much be used nice. in all of our boss fights and more throughout the game there's actually a third npc that we want i mean explosives are really strong in terraria so it makes sense Hunt, we don't really need it's the nurse we can pay her to heal us that won't be useful until later in the game there's also a really weird spawn i've really? never seen a terraria world where the jungle is like literally in the spawn area it's like a super difficult biome but it will help us later on in the run so while purple hair guy was okay. making those houses i started my search for gold and headed over to the left really quickly i found a snow biome and got crazy good luck for this Ooh. run like right away i found an abandoned house which means an immediate chest and in this chest i got an oh ice look sword, at that really good for beauty fight. and i I sword instantaneously off the bat. Now that's pretty lucky. Being enemies in early game. I then found a second house, and this one gave me a snowball cannon, Ooh. which is even better. Though we'll get back to that later. And also in this chest, I got a gravitation potion, which isn't important right now, but it will be for a huh. boss later in the run. And to make this start even better, I also got a third house in the same Shh. section with an extractinator, which is really good to sell. But this ain't a world record, is it? Th didn't say world record in the description or anything. Even though this this is kind of why this is very impressive. Those items and you start in your Terraria run is well free. Fine, not gonna lie and a feather falling potion which will also be useful for a boss later on so after recalling and selling my stuff i had a total of six gold which would be good enough to take out skeletron with some dynamite from the demolitionist i ended up finding multiple chests while exploring cave really you need that little to actually just get rid of skeletron that's insane i did is, did they nerf something? Is, however, they mostly a junk that wouldn't really give me that much money, so I can only buy a few dynamite. But towards the end, I did find a house with a grindstone in it. Now, grindstones sell for about two and a half gold, so pretty penny from that. Also, nice, I found a grubby bad. here and killed it. This does nothing, but it does improve our morale. And I also found a pair of Hermes boots. These give you a super speed boost for running. And after going back and selling all my treasure, I started the elevator, which Yo. I'll discuss later. Now on my way to Skeletron, I took- There's no shot he just does a elevator with a uh, dynamite, right? The how, how can you have enough? Well, maybe you can actually have enough money for it. Who knows? 31 dynamite. He can also use grenades. Huh. Maybe. Maybe there's a shot, but that's kind of unbelievable. Purple Hair Guy's Hermes boots, which helped a lot with speed. Luckily, we always know that Skeletron will spawn on the side of the ice biome, so I knew he'd be over to the left. Mm. I also picked up some snow blocks using a bit of my dynamite here, which let me get snowballs, and those are ammo Makes for the sense. snow cannon. So yeah, I was pretty set for early game enemies. Also, on my way to Skeletron, I went through the Crimson. This place is usually awful in early game, but the snowball cannon annihilated oh, the enemies, and look I was at able this. to use this time to farm some of the six vertebrae that we need to spawn a boss fight later in the game. Fin yeah, he's actually fine. I mean, that biome, not bad, not bad. Finally, once I got to the temple, I found a gold portal with five extra gold, which is always nice, and set up for the Skeletron fight, which is a lot easier than you might think. Even so, for safety, we like to have Purple Hair Guy Wormhole Potion to me, since it will help a little with the fight and exploring the dungeon afterwards, since there's hmm. an item in there that we really want. Anyways, on- What item can you want from the dungeon, though? I mean, there's a bunch of cool stuff, but what's the thing that you want from the dungeon? to the fight, I start by throwing five dynamite where Skeletron will spawn before summoning him. This gets rid of Ooh, one of his hands, which is nice. nice since that's the biggest way he does damage. After that, True. we want to take out his- if you get rid of his hands, it's like, the, the skull doesn't do anything, let's be real. I mean, even if it's just one hand, that's already, like, super easy. 
other hand which just takes a few more dynamite and hoping we get some good rng on his attacks which we did and that means only the head is left the rest of this fight now just comes down to intuition <laughs> i want to time my dynamite throws with when skeletron uses his head spin attack when done correctly this gets us a ton of damage and after just a bit we finished him off and i even got his really overpowered nice. hook drop which is nice since we have to make one last hook but now it's time to go into his temple where the game really starts getting dangerous by the way Dude, the first time I've entered in, into the dungeon, I was so pissed. You just die in this place so often. There's traps, there's this, there's that. Oh, it's such a, it's such, it's just not a good time to be alive. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you subscribe and check out Purple Hair Guy's channel since he makes a lot of really great Terraria content. Anyways, in this temple, we have three objectives. Get a few water candles for mob grinding, collect 30 bones from killing skeletons so we can spawn Skeletron Prime later in the run and get okay. a shadow key. And the dungeon is pretty scary. Dude, because look at those spikes. It's so annoying. Something just comes and bonks you into the spikes. Congratulations. It's like lava, but at least... You can see pe uh, you can see someone trying to knock you into the lava in hell. Because it has a ton of traps that can kill you if you aren't careful. And the enemies in here do a lot of damage. So we Mimics. need to play smart. Then to get the shadow key, we need to first get a gold key, which can drop from enemies in pots. And then use that to open up a gold chest and hope it has a shadow key, which it usually doesn't. Purple hair guy and <laughs> I stayed together for a while. So if one of us dies, the other can stay without having to run back. And eventually, purple hair guy got taken out. So he went to go work on the elevator. The elevator is a combo between the words hell and elevator. Created by exploding the ground Makes dynamite sense. if you reach hell itself, of course. And and this comes in handy so many times throughout your run, and it'll be the basis of post wall of flesh material harvested. Sadly, since the jungle is right beneath us, I ran into so many railway tracks, which could have led <laughs> me to awesome, amazing loot. But since this was a speed run, I have to be fast, and I had to skip treasure, which is the saddest thing ever. But I did find heart crystals, and heart crystals give us more HP, which makes run. I remember watching a speed run of Terrari and a it was a long time ago, and I think, like, getting a couple of heart crystals was actually very important because you needed to do uh, do stuff. Is this, like, not needed any longer, or at least in uh, uh, co-op? runs easier and while he was doing that after way too long in the dungeon i got all my bones and a shadow key which is definitely ah, worth nice. the time i spent there and now i can return to explore the underworld at this point of the run purple hair guy went to work on the bridge for the wall of flesh fight why i went looking for loot this classic bridge and grenades boys I, I mean they're probably gonna use dynamite right but man i remember Dude, I made the bridge the first time so much longer than it needed to be because, man, I was not confident at all that I'm going to destroy the flesh wall. And man, I don't remember what I uh, used. I think I used some kind of rail gun. Not rail gun, but, you know, the sh not no, not even the shotgun. I used some kind of bad gun and I didn't use grenades because I didn't uh, I couldn't get the money because I was dying so often. There's a few things we need from the underworld, but the important ones are a bed, obsidian skin potion, and better weapons. We can find a bed from the houses in the underworld, and the other stuff in either pots or chests, which I can open with the shadow key. Also, another nice thing about the chests is they can have a bunch of additional loot, like spelunker and gravitation potions, treasure magnets, and stuff to sell, so it's worthwhile okay. to look while purple hair guy builds the bridge. Doing this, I found a sun fury, some hellwing bows, and a bunch of potions. Purple hair Sun's fury is bad, hell bow is cool. Hair guy also got a yo-yo, which will be really good for later so this was a really good section of our run now it's time for the wall of flesh fight which is one of the most basic fights but also one of the most challenging fights or not really challenging but annoying you need to sacrifice your guide in order to summon the wall and you can do this in two ways you can either find a doo-doo demon and kill it and then get his voodoo doll and throw the voodoo doll in the lava or you can make the guide a lovely house and then break out the floor instead of i had no idea you can do that I thought the only way is to get this done is by having a demon like this just have a guide doll attached and then you get it. Dude, that is insane. I didn't even know this is a strat. For a hot bath. Uh, after you murder him in cold blood, I guess in hot lava, you pretty much just run oh in a straight God. line and time dynamite throw. Dude, look at how slow it's moving. I was so afraid of it back in the day. So they explode on the eyes and the mouth of the wall of flesh. This isn't as easy as it seems because the wall will speed up as its health gets lower. But as long as you just keep running, you'll probably be fine. Maybe. And just like with Skeletron, we had both me and Easy here just in case I died. But we don't want him throwing dynamite because that'll actually slow down the fight. Because if a dynamite explodes the bridge, the other dynamite will fall through it and probably won't hit it. So he just put campfires down to give me a health regen and killed enemies if they tried to kill me. So once the wall is dead, he God. 
Got it. a few important pieces of loot. Sadly, this time we dropped the Clockwork Assault Rifle, which we can't really use because we need ammo for it, and it's just kind of mid in general. But he did drop the Pone Hammer, which is a guaranteed drop, and this allows us to break Crimson Altars. If you break a Crimson Altar, you spawn Hard Mode Ores. But before I go and break those Altars, I need to chuck an Obsidian Skin Potion, hop down in the lava, and break Hellstone so I can get a pickaxe in order to mine those Hard Mode Ores. Super complex. Which means we're back to being separated, since I'll be going for 9 Souls of Light, 9 Souls of Night, and a bunch of Icker. I always like to start with finding the Souls of Night in the Underground Crimson. To do this, we can see where the game changes a bunch of blocks into Crimstone, and that means we're in the right area. Then we want to place a long bridge of our own Crimstone blocks to hopefully spawn Icker stickers, since they drop Icker. Then from here, I can build a platform slightly above the Crimstone blocks and place two chests on it, which prevents those blocks from being exploded by dynamite. After that, it's just a matter of building up using wooden planks, putting a water candle down on top to spawn more enemies, and then throwing dynamite on the chest to take out everything that spawns. I can also use the yo-yo I borrowed from Purple Hair Guy uh. to help with any extra enemies, which is really nice since it keeps the Icker stickers stunned and we can take them out easy. After a while of doing this, we should get a bunch of Icker, which will turn into Icker arrows later and our nine souls of night. So it was time to move over to the right and get our souls of light. Meanwhile, I was mining hard mode ores. There's actually three tiers of ores, tier one, two, three, which, you know, makes total sense. And you need a pickaxe or a drill of the previous tier to mine the next tier. So since we had cobalt and then ore calcum and then adamantine, I needed a cobalt pickaxe to mine Wait, ore. Wait, how did they already get a drill? Or are you supposed to? I don't remember. Are you supposed to have a drill that fast? Okay. Simple as that. And since multiplayer boss fights are actually harder, I always like to mine more to create armor because, you know, better safe than sorry. Armor gives us more defense. More defense means we die slower. Now, this would be a waste of time, except Easy's gathering souls while I'm doing this, so we're kind of doing things in tandem and it's an overall benefit to us. I got back together with Easy at the end to help him get souls of light. You know, I'm the better gamer. I gotta get them souls. We got our nine souls of night and our nine souls of light, and we went on to the mechanical bosses. Our first one being the destroyer, which takes okay. five iron bars, six vertebrae, which we gathered earlier. Oh, come on! On. It's it's the cheesy strats, like, come on. This dude is literally so easy. We just make a box and a platform with chests on top of it, and we throw dynamite down. The way our structure's built, the destroyer wow. actually can't hit us, and we just consistently explode him. Dude, all of our bosses are so basic, it's just painful. Until he dies. It's... But remember when you uh, just just did the basic devolver in the corrupt biome and you just like found out that you can just spear him and it does like 50 damage, oh boy. And it's like guns, completely ineffective, giant arcing hits though, Mwah, the bomb boy. So incredibly easy. And after defeating the destroyer, we got lucky and got enough bars to make two hollowed repeaters. They're pretty much just crossbows, and we'll need them for our next two fights. Now, this is where the Icker mentioned earlier comes in, as we make Icker arrows. These arrows actually deal more damage than most other arrows we have access to, and they lower the defense of enemies, meaning they deal even more damage on top of dealing more damage. It's crazy. Now, it was time for the twins boss fight. This is where a lot of our runs end, because they are mm. kind of a difficult boss, and since we don't have max health and the best armor, they only need a few hits to really kill us. Now the twins are two giant metal eyeballs that are named Spasmatism Retinazer, and they do pack a punch with their fire breathing and their laser vision. Kind of scary. I had a gravitation potion which allows me to swap. Yeah, this is not actually the easiest boss that people imagine it is. The direction of my gravity so I can fly upwards. Well, easy had to do more primitive methods such as uh, jumping and running away. Now, if both of us died at the same time, <laughs> the bosses would despawn. Yep. So we'd need to make sure we survived until the respawn time was up. And after a few unfortunate deaths, we managed to defeat our visionary foes. And this leads us to the ultimate mechanical mayhem, the Skeletron Prime fight. However, we weren't exactly confident with the time we had left in the night because when the sun rises, those bosses disappear. So we decided to snuggle up in bed together and wait for tomorrow. Since sleeping increases the speed time passes game we also created a few more houses so the steampunker could move in and she sells us a jetpack that finally allows us to fly once we got a good day's mm. rest and we bought our trusty jetpacks we were ready to kill skeletron prime now Bruh, this fight's actually this super one's... simple it's just avoid attacks shoot his fat head until he dies you can destroy his hands but that's a pretty big waste of time since once you kill the hands you're not killing the head and after we killed optimus prime himself we had all the mechanical boss souls and these souls allowed us to make hollowed pickaxes which allow us to mine chlorophyte which we'll use for our next weapon and as we look for 120 chlorophyte to make some new weapons, we also want to look for Plantera's bulb, which hides somewhere in the jungle. The bulb can be anywhere in the entire jungle, so this can sometimes take a really long time. At the very least though, it's also a good time to collect some extra hearts and loot that we missed earlier, so it isn't a complete waste of time. And we actually got really lucky, because after less than 10 minutes of searching, we found a Plantera bulb right by our elevator, since we had the really weird jungle placement this run. The only reason we didn't find it sooner is more Plantera bulbs can spawn as time passes, so it probably showed up a little later. We also found enough chlorophyte 
to make two shot bows, which shoot multiple arrows Okay, they're shot, making the arena. They're making a basic arena. Increase our DPS for the remaining fights. Now on to Plantera. We want to make a fairly big arena by carving out a large section and putting some wooden planks down to walk on. Then with all of that done, we can take out the bulb and start the fight, which is honestly pretty easy. All we need to do is keep confusing Plantera by flying around our arena and constantly get some shots in her. Then, even when she transforms into her second phase, she's no match for us and we can take her out even if I did die right at the end. This also yeah. gives us the grenade launcher, which Close. is really useful for our next boss fight, the golem. Before we kill the golem, we actually have to get to the golem. Now this part's really annoying since we need to infiltrate the- I don't even know what the golem is. Jungle Temple. Now the Jungle Temple has a ton of traps and these stinky lizard men that'll try to stop us, but they are really no match for us. It's Next. always the lizard people doing the problems After through. reaching the boss room, we broke all the traps that were set inside of it and made a platform towards the ceiling to stand on. Now the golem is basically three parts. He has his hands, his head, and his body. Now the hands will just try to fist you no matter what, and you can destroy them, while the head will only start trying to laser blast you at half health. Once you destroy the head, it'll open its body section. Sadly, we ran into a few tough times here and got wiped while the golem mm. barely survived now this was at the end because this boss can be summoned multiple times we just had to get back to the boss room buck up and fight him again this time absolutely wiping the floor and easy got a sick boss fight clutch now here's where two <laughs> really unfortunate things happened first after my high of clutching out the golem we got a really good pick saw that i gave to purple hair guy so he gave me his old pick to sell but i wasn't thinking at all and ended up selling both his and my pick so it looks like i'm using an iron pick <laughs> Oh boy, ain't that, ain't that a classic pro gamer move right there? For the rest of the game, at least it's logic. Damn, it's, I hope at least he drank a monster monster bull and did something to his wife because man, that that, that should, you, you need to take the pressure off. <laughs> but that's not too big of a deal, especially compared to the next thing that happened. See, we were setting up for our next boss, the Lunatic Cultist, who's at Skeletron's lair, and to do this, we wanted to create a house for the nurse to move in so we can use her for healing. But she can only change houses during night, and sadly, before she could move in, we got a pirate invasion. Invasions Ooh. are events that can happen nice. randomly in Terraria, where our village will constantly be attacked by a certain enemy. Now, normally this wouldn't be too bad since pirates aren't too hard of an invasion, but we quickly learned that because of this invasion, we couldn't sleep and pass time quickly, which meant the nurse couldn't move in and we had two choices. The first was to wait 15 Makes minutes sense. for night to come and play it safe, while the second was to just not care and try to beat this really hard fight without the nurse, and yeah, pretty obvious what we went with. Now not yeah. all was lost for this fight, since we had some really good health potions and we're doing co-op. This meant if one of us got low, the other could try to take aggro from the cultist so we could wait out our potion timer. The real issue with this fight though is when the cultist tries to spawn enemies. He'll sometimes go into this phase where he produces a couple clones and if we shoot a clone instead of him or if we take too long to hit him he spawns a really powerful enemy and we would almost certainly lose the fight this is why we also removed the floating island in the air by the way since we've lost multiple runs Ooh. to him getting stuck in the island during this attack which made it so that there was no way to hit him but other than that it was just pure focus time especially since there were a few times where one of us went down and the other needed to stall to give them time to respawn this was probably the most stressful fight i've done in terraria and right when we were finally at the end the craziest part happened I was currently in the act of stalling for Purple Hair Guy to get alive again, and literally right as he got respawned, I died, meaning I just barely held out enough for Purple Hair Guy to come in and us Clutch. to finally beat the fight. So after all that, there's just four okay. pillars and one Moon Lord to go. The pillars are essentially many events that need to be completed in order to summon the final boss, the Moon Lord. They're generally pretty difficult, as the enemies they spawn have a gimmick and are actually like super powerful. You gotta complete each pillar by killing 100 of like the associated enemy, and then destroying the pillar itself, which has like 20,000 HP, oh my gosh. However, there's uh, there's a lot of ways to cheese this. The first pillar we needed to clear was the Vortex Pillar. Since we were being invaded by Jack Sparrow and his crew of Salty Sea Dogs, we really didn't have time to gear up, so we just hmm. had to run into the area and hope for the best. Now we died a bunch, but I- I mean, this looks like a tactic and a half if I'm being completely honest, not bad. I managed to dig a hole, so it, it all worked out. You just had to sit in that hole and, and he, shoot upwards. Dude, and he's just shooting upwards. Yeah, it's just a good repeater. Wow. And it will kill everything. There's there's no chance. And after destroying it, we got the Vortex Fragments, which we can use to craft the Phantasm, which is a really powerful bow, and we'll Ooh. need it for the next pillar. Next, we were on to the Stardust Pillar, and there's even better cheese for this one. What we want to do is bring a few star cells out of the pillar's range. Then again, we can dig a hole and shoot up at them. The nice thing about this- so shooting like how many arrows is it shooting is it is it not in g amount of arrows that it shoots enemy though is they split into many star cells when defeated and will grow back 
into regular ones after waiting a bit. So we can take out a hundred of these and call it a day. Then all that's left is taking out the pillar like usual, and we get the Stardust Dragon. Yo, did which you is see? Did you see how fast that this uh, they were doing damage to him? After waiting a bit, so we can take out a hundred of these. Look at and this. Call look at this. They're like usual, and we get the Stardust. Yeah, yeah, look at this, dude. That's insanely fast. A hundred of these and call it a day. Then all that's left bam, is bam, 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 bam. He's literally doing 2k damage per second. We get the Stardust Dragon, which is an insanely Damn. strong summon that we'll be using for the rest of the speedrun. We also were able to finally get rid of the pirate invasion here, which is pretty important for a bit later, so things <laughs> were starting to come together. The third pillar we were doing was the Solar Pillar. This one's actually really interesting, as you have to do a super weird cheese for it. You have to get as high as you can in the sky, so there's no blocks for enemies to spawn on. You can do this with junction boxes, which can oddly be placed with nothing around them, and then mm. you can place a platform on top of them. Them, which you can hook to to stay in the air then we built essentially what is a giant fishing hook and stood on top of it and let our stardust dragons do their thing and destroyed the pillar by just shooting off the side of it without <laughs> any enemies spotting it's nice. really awesome this gave us some solar fragments which we used to craft daybreaks which will be our main weapon for the moon Ooh, lord look fight. at and that finally, our fourth pillar is the beautiful pillar, which is going to be the hardest one since we won't be using cheese for it i also unfortunately was on my own for the beginning of this fight since purple hair guy was busy building our arena for the moon lord and my loneliness made me die a few times. Other than that, there's not too much to say. Besides the fact that Purple Hair Guy got a hollowed hood, which allows him to have another segment on his Stardust Dragon. Sadly, we only had enough resources for one, but it was really helpful for defeating the last pillar and getting onto the Moon Lord. And the mm, Moon Lord's nice. honestly not too bad of a fight with the structure that Purple Hair Guy made. Basically, we have the nurse trapped in a really uncomfortable space so she can heal us in this stone structure at the no, top. Nice, I would also trap a nurse in a really uncomfortable space so she can heal me so the moon lord can't hit us with his laser beam attack after that huh. all we need to do is use our day breaks to hit the moon lord's head and hands to get him onto his next phase the only real worry is with the nurse we always need to pay attention to our health and make sure we don't die but we can't always have her heal menu open because then she won't be able to heal and will end up dying herself because of this for the first time in our 80 Ooh, hours look of at practice this. purple hair guy died instead of me during the moon lord fight and i had to clutch up which was terrifying like many other times in this run though i was able to clutch up when it was needed and get the moon lord onto his last phase where we recall over to our bed and start shooting down you can't see the moon lord's eye on his chest because the background is covering it but it's really easy to take out and finally after four months okay. of practicing the speed run we completed it in two hours 49 minutes and 39 seconds which will land that's just ninth place on the speed run that's impressive wait look at this of fourth place 130 fifth place two and then this is like five hours two hours three hours so this is something new ish i guess well i never saw anyone do this before so kind of wild very interesting very interesting no wonder they didn't restart after the most minor inconvenience <laughs> But man, imagine, they needed two hours and the uh, breaker is probably like one hour. That's wild. Do you need to have some kind of Jesus RNG there to get the first place or something? Who knows? ...com leaderboards and we'll take it, especially after dealing with everything that went wrong. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and check out Purple yeah. Hair Guy's channel for more great... Good stuff, good stuff. What can I say? Easy speezy, what a time to be alive, as they say. Well, anyway, this was Quizzer777. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, and already, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.